when health officials in China admitted they had a problem. The rapidly growing number of people were developing a dry cough and fever before getting pneumonia and for some it turned fatal. Doctors have named the disease COVID-19. When they tried to trace its origin, they found a likely source, the food market in Wuhan. In no time, the virus had spread across the globe. The first case of coronavirus in Kenya was confirmed on 12th March 2020. In response to the rise of more cases, the government introduced measures and directives to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. We are now below the 5% positivity rate recommended by the World Health Organization for reopening. COVID-19 is preventable. Protect yourself, your family, and the community. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. It's Sunday, the 18th of October, 2020. Good evening. Many thanks for joining us tonight on Channel One Weekend. I trust you had yourself a fantastic day. And many thanks wherever it is that you are tuned in from. It's a day that the Ministry of Health is warning to reimpose some of the strict measures if Kenyans continue behaving normally. And today, Health Cabinet Secretary was announcing that we are staring at a second wave of COVID-19 disease, even as the positive Positivity rate now jumps at 13 percent. We have details of that and much more right here at Channel One Weekend at Purity and Ascomoseo and at KBC Channel One News. The hashtag to use tonight is Channel One Weekend. Let's begin our broadcast with the day the day's highlights. Brace yourselves for the worst. Minister of Health warns Kenyans of an impending second wave of the deadly COVID-19 disease. Deputy President William Ruto calls on leaders to work together and transform the lives of ordinary Kenyans. And it's countdown to D-Day in Kisi County as security is beefed up ahead of Tuesday's Mashuja Day national celebrations. The second semi-final CAF Champions League continues tonight at 10 p.m. East African time and the match will be aired live right here at KBC Channel 1 and therefore due to that we will not have family matters but we will resume next week on Sunday. My name is Purity Musel and Byron Abuli is a sign language interpreter tonight. Let's begin our broadcast.
The Minister of Health is warning Kenyans to prepare for tough times ahead as it announced that the country was staring at a second wave of the deadly COVID-19 disease. The ministry pointing a finger at politicians and social places for making a mockery of the containment measures leading to a surge in cases of coronavirus on a day the country recorded 685 new cases from 4,912 samples. It's back to the drawing board for Kenya in the fight against the deadly COVID-19 disease. As the Minister of Health on Sunday announced a second wave of the coronavirus infection in the country. On October 1st, it was 4%. A day later, on October 2nd, it rose to 7%. On October 3rd, it went to 8%. And it has been in the period since marked a consistent upward trajectory. Today, at about 13% incline and a daily rise in deaths, we can confidently point to a potential crisis unless we take some immediate actions to avert this. The Minister of Health says the reckless behavior by Kenyans, including politicians, has catalyzed a spike in infections witnessed in the past few days as it announced 685 new cases of the coronavirus tested from 4,912 samples, indicating a 13.9% positivity rate compared to the 4% positivity rate before COVID-19 restrictions were lifted. It is indeed true that the younger people are the ones who are taking the greatest risks with this disease and flirting with it. This is not a problem for the youth as such. We are seeing a return to normalcy even amongst health workers. These times are not normal. And please do not treat them normally. According to Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe, counties such as Nakuru, Kilifi, Trukana, Kisi and Bungoma that had initially shown decline in numbers are witnessing a surge of cases. The spike we are witnessing has not just erupted out of nowhere. It has in part been triggered by wanton violations of containment protocols and advice from our experts. I am told that bars are neither requiring their patrons to observe social distancing nor asking them to wear masks and they seem to be under the impression that sanitization at the door is a sufficient requirement for service. Kagwe warning that the nation was facing a rough time with ICU cases on the rise with currently 28 patients in critical care, 10 on ventilators. According to the ministry, the country's health system is almost strained with 1,000 people in various hospitals struggling with the COVID-19 infection. The new trend alarming with the ministry saying even people with no underlying conditions now succumbing to the disease. From the new cases, Nairobi County tops the list with 141 cases, followed by Nakuru with 127. Mombasa has 73 cases, Transoya 61, Kisi 37, Kiambu 30, Kakamega and Kisumu 27 cases each, Busia 20, Kilifi and Nandi 18 cases each, Nyeri and Trukana 14 cases each, Nyamira 10, Kajado and Taita Taveta 9 cases each, Bungoma 8, Wasimgishu like Kipia and Machakos, six cases each. Baringo, five. Muranga, Meru and Wajia, three cases each. Kitui, Kwale and Makueni, two cases each. While Siaya, Elgeo, Marakwet, Vihiga and Isiolo counties, single cases. Seven more people succumbed to the disease, taking the fatality number to 832. To contain the spread of the disease, the National Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19 advises counties to enforce the existing containment measures, warning if Kenyans continue to behave normally, it will be forced to reinforce strict measures. If we lose this individual responsibility that we're supposed to have, then we go back to a situation where it's now between health and the economy. And health will always be the one that takes uh, preference. So mine is really to urge Kenyans, please, please take personal responsibility for yourself and for those around you. Take care of the country. 
The two days coronavirus mass testing exercise for residents of Nairobi came to a close Sunday with many claiming stigmatization was a big impediment for defeating the virus. Health officials conducting these screenings say that numerous forms of discrimination have been reported and that a section of Kenyans see no need for the test when the state has reopened schools and social meeting places. Day two of mass testing in Nairobi. The Nairobi Metropolitan Services is conducting free mass testing in 17 sub-counties within the city county. Families, individuals walk in at Rabai Road Primary School, Makadara, sub-county. Caregivers from orphanages guiding children in having their COVID-19 tests conducted. The caregivers are keen to know the status of the children before they are integrated back to the orphanage. The kids were sent back to their relatives in mid-March after the country confirmed first COVID-19 case. And also we have caretakers in that children's home, some of, course, some of whom don't stay in there. Um, they go home and come back and you, have, you know this is a community, I mean there's community transmission currently going on. So it would just be good to know as they interact with their caregivers and as the children interact with each other if they are okay in terms of their COVID status or if uh, they are those who have been infected so that we can isolate them and uh, give them the care that they require in good time. I think it's good for you to know my status. At Isili Health Center, street families got wind of the COVID-19 free testing and took advantage of the exercise. <laughs> but even with the cases surging, some locals seem to have thrown caution to the wind and wearing of masks seem bygone. In Mombasa, a community-based leader, Zamza Mohammed, has urged the national government to conduct free mass testing nationally to find the extent of the virus spread. Hakuna mtu alikuwa na expect kwa ugonjwa huu utakuja. Watu wamekaa nyumbani hawana makazi. Unaambua kutest uende ukalipe 1000 ama 1600. Mtu atatoa wapi? Anaangalia anasema acha nikamweli mao na tangawizi ninywe, mimi nijisikize. Ushaona? In Wasingishu area, Governor Jackson Mandago is calling on residents to adhere to guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health to fight coronavirus. Mandago spoke Sunday at Wasingishu County Assembly when he met funeral committee of the late Huruma MCA Peter Kuru Chomba, who succumbed to COVID-19 last week. We have no choice. I think protecting lives that are still existing is going to be very paramount. For, for, for all of us. A section of Kenyans are yet to agree to the presence of COVID-19 in the country, thus keeping away from testing centers. Health official says it takes the whole society in ending the spread of the contagious virus. They say it starts by knowing our status. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One in Isili, the county of Nairobi. To political news, Deputy President William Ruto is calling on leaders to work together and dedicate their energy and time to positioning the country on a sustainable and resilient path that will transform the lives of ordinary Kenyans. Speaking after attending Sunday Mass at the Sacred Heart of Jesus Karaba Wango Catholic Parish Mbere South constituency in Embu County, Ruto called on leaders to shelve selfish, selfish political ambitions and instead focus on uniting Kenyans ahead of the next general election. On Sunday, the Deputy President William Ruto continued with his tour of the Eastern Region, spending the day at Mbere South constituency in Embu County. Ruto was among tens of political leaders who joined residents for Sunday Mass at the Sacred Heart of Jesus Karaba Wango Catholic Parish. It is here that he called on leaders to focus on activities that will transform the lives of the electorate rather than discussions about the creation of political positions. We must eliminate politics that divides and creates hate and enmity. We must insist as a people that we want politics that unites, that brings people together and that focuses on the development of our nation. Leaders who accompany him faulted those pushing for reforms to benefit a few people and pointing fingers at the deputy president.
for assisting ordinary Kenyans start small income generating projects. Ata sahi hawaelewi wheelbarrow, hawaelewi mukokoteni, bicycle, motorbike, hawaelewi kuwa kwa nyumba ambaye haina choo, haina maji na hata hakuna maji karibu. Hii maneno umeanza kuogea na watu ya wheelbarrow, na watu ya mikokoteni na hii watu ya chini umefanya makosa kubwa ndio utapata shida mingi. Kuna mambo ya kuunganisha Kenya na kuna mambo ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba ati watu watakubali matokeo ya uchaguzi. Sasa inaonyesha tunaelekea kwenye mgawanyiko. Naibu wa rais alikuwa akifanya kazi na rais wake. Leo ana, tunaona yeye mara iko kwa faranda, mara iko wapi, chakula inaliwa, hakaribishwi, amepewa ile maisha ilikuwa na Yesu, lakini tunasa, tunasema hiyo ndio barabara ya kutoboa ya kuenda mbele. The deputy president and more than 30 members of parliament who accompanied him thereafter made a stop at Kiritiri market for a meet and greet with the residents. Kabla hatujaongea mambo ya prime minister tutaongea mambo ya boda boda kwanza nani amesema ule mtu mdogo hapa siku moja hata kuwa kitu katika Kenya hii watu wawache madharau watu wawache matusi watu wawache kiburi wera ni wera hustle ni hustle kazi ni kazi Timothy Kipnusu for Channel 1 News Staying with politics, Amani National Congress Party leader Musalia Mudavadi has called on Kenyans to reject political leaders who are spreading messages of hate and tribalism that may jeopardize the unity of the country. Mudavadi, who was in Gilgil Nakuru County, urged politicians to tone down the political temperatures and drive their energy to survive or reviving the battered economy facing the heat of the COVID-19. Musalia says COVID-19 pandemic has hit the country hard, destabilizing many investments, businesses and livelihoods at large and leaders should focus their time and energy on helping struggling Kenyans instead of politics of division. We are having an economic crisis. Uchumi uko kwa halimbaya. We all know it. Uh, I've constantly talked about the dangerous debt that is in our hands. And if we don't focus on matters of the economy, we are not going to help this country. Alafu nakuta economy yetu imerudi chini. Wakina mama wengi ni wafanya biashara. Vijana ni wafanya biashara. Wakina waze wote. Economy meenda chini na kukomboa economy ya Kenya. Tuko na kijana yenu ambaya anaitua msalia mdawadi. Kwa zabu tunajua korona imemaliza uchumi ya Kenya. Si Kenya peke yake worldwide. Marais wale wanachaguliwa country zingine ni wale wana focus kwa uchumi. Ukiangalia moja na jita hasola atahamusha uchumi. Mwingine eh, BBI ndiye anategemea peke yake imuamushe aendelee Speaking at PCEA Gilgil Town Church Nakuru County on Sunday, Mosalia with a host of leaders who had accompanied him point out at what the country needs now is unity of purpose and leaders who are in various leadership positions should exercise at most caution when delivering their messages to Kenyans and avoid dividing Kenyans along tribal lines. Pukane na mambo ya unafik. Kama we uko kwa serikali ya uhuru, Usidanganye kwamba wewe hauko na uhuru. Wewe uko hapo. If he has succeeded, you have succeeded with him. If there are shortcomings, don't run away from the shortcomings na kusema ni za uhuru peke yake. Hata wewe uko. Meanwhile, Bungoma Senator Moses Wetangula has urged the president to call for a dialogue with all leaders ahead of the anticipated release of the Building Bridges Initiative report. Wetangula says the document should be seen to enjoy some consensus before being made public. Before we release the BBI report, I request you to call all leaders. We sit together, we agree that this is good for our country, so that when we go to the referendum is at all, let that referendum leave our country more united than it is and not more divided. It is Speaking in Mundika Catholic Church where he attended a mass service and later opened for the Kenya offices in the same region where Tangula asked the head of state to launch the report and allow public discourse to carry the nation along. We want the president to launch the report. If we are able to have a committee to find a team by a man, what's your name on it? If we get a seminar. 
Meanwhile, Kakamega Governor Weekly for Paranya is drumming up support for the BBI appealing to citizens to support the report saying it will increase the fund devolved to the county governments, hence enhancing development. Wakatu huu katika ukatuzi tunashita kubwa ya pesa. Pesa nyingi imepaki huko Nairobi. Tunataka pesa itoke Nairobi ije isaidie watu machinani. Kwa sababu machinani well, Suna West Member of Parliament Peter Masara is urging young people to refrain from the politics of hooliganism. Politicians hiring youths to case scale, we, want, we have to condemn them. And we are not going to allow few people who are taking advantage of youth to misuse them. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. Keep tweeting. We are live on Facebook and Twitter, YouTube. You can also tell us where you tuned in from at Purity underscore Museo and at KBC Channel 1 News. We're taking our first commercial break. Don't go too far. We still have plenty more to come. We want to rule our country. Injiangu. Chikumurangu. Mimi ni shuja. It was New Year's Eve 2019 when health officials in China admitted they had a problem. The rapidly growing number of people were developing a dry cough and fever before getting pneumonia and for some it turned fatal. Doctors have named the disease COVID-19. When they tried to trace its origin, they found a likely source, the food market in Wuhan. In no time, the virus had spread across the globe. The first case of coronavirus in Kenya was confirmed on 12th March 2020. In response to the rise of more cases, the government introduced measures and directives to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. We are now below the 5% positivity rate recommended by the World Health Organization for reopening. COVID-19 is preventable. Protect yourself, your family, and the community. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. And welcome back. Security in Kisi Town has been beefed up as preparations for this year's Mashuja Day. National celebrations approach the final stretch. Only 3,000 invited guests will be allowed into the Gusi Stadium due to the COVID-19 pandemic containment measures. A multi-sectoral team led by the Interior and Coordination of National Government Permanent Secretary Karanja Kebicho is expected to announce more measures on Monday regarding the logistics for the Tuesday event which will be held in three venues. Gusi Stadium Sunday afternoon. The military making sure everything is ready for this year Mashuja Day celebrations. Only 3,000 guests will be allowed into the 25,000-seater stadium with other Kenyans following the proceedings through mounted screens at Kisi Golf Club and Kisi Primary School and other strategic locations within Kisi Town. 
due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the 57th Mashuja Day will be like no other. The usual hosting of crowds and crowds inside here may not happen. Uh, the usual uh, display uh, of uh, uh, the kids and uh, scouts, police, we may miss a bit of that as we observe the protocol, but we will ensure that we give the celebrations here the dignity that uh, Mashuja and the Mashujas of this country deserve. And therefore, for this year, we will have a number of venues, we will have those people who will be in the stadium and we will have others who uh, will sit in specified uh, spaces around the Kisi town. The National Celebration Steering Committee led by Interior and Coordination of National Government Permanent Secretary Karanja Kibichu and Government Spokesperson Colonel Retired Cyrus Oguna will issue more guidelines on Monday. This year's Mashuja Day will celebrate Kenyans who have made a difference in various fields in including health, security, education, agriculture, business, among others. Kisi County was given an opportunity to host the national celebrations after missing out on a chance to stage Madraka Day festivities due to the current global health crisis. For Channel One News, I'm Ben Troenjoy. And of course, we will be keeping you updated on what happens from tomorrow. The preparations and announcements of the protocol to be followed will be done tomorrow, Monday, ahead of those celebrations. Keep It KBC will be also coming to you live from Kisi, the Gusi Stadium, from tomorrow all the way to the end of the event on Tuesday. In other news, a family in Mombasa County is searching for their son who was allegedly abducted by unknown people three weeks ago. 25-year-old Abdul Karim Abu Bakar was allegedly snatched from their home in Magongo by a group of people dressed in police uniform. This and more stories in the County News Roundup. Juma Musa says the men stormed his house, harassed them before leaving with Abu Bakar. Juma says his nephew came to Mombasa in July in search of employment opportunity and had only worked for a month before the abduction. Tumewahi kumtafuta kila mahali. Tumeenda police station, tumepika reporti changamwe, police station. Tumeenda hospitali, tumeenda mochari, tukamkosa. Tasa umishoe tumeona tuje hapa, tusaidike. Meanwhile, Jomvu member of parliament Badi Tualiba has called on the government to stop the frequent transfer of deputy county commissioners, claiming it is affecting service delivery. Jomvu tumechoka kupawa transfer za sazote kwa madisisi wetu. Kwa sababu leo disisi huyu ni karibu wa nane ama watisa tangu tuanzishe Jomvu. The legislator argues that deputy county commissioners need to be given time to familiarize themselves with the area and get to learn the problems facing the residents. Elsewhere, Kisi University students are pleading with President Uru Kenyatta to intervene and address financial constraints at the institution, which they say is derailing development. Through their umbrella body, Kisi University Students Union Kusu, the students say the head of state is welcome to visit the institution and witness the applied first hand. Uh, our institution is highly uh, under capitation. We are exper experiencing uh, uh, little funding of this institution, leading to even some of the workers being sacked. In Kiambu County, a middle-aged man in Thika is helping Kenyans living with physical disabilities regain their mobility through his skillful invention. Martin Wahome upcycles scrap metal and electric waste and the end products are battery-powered wheelchairs. This wheelchair is very easy to use. It is in a place where you can Kuna kwa Kiingereza tunaita joystick, unapeleka mbele, ukifinya upande wa mbele iko na uwezo wa kwenda mbele. Ukifinya na, na nyuma iko na uwezo wa kurudi na nyuma. Wakati unataka ku, kuzunguka, unafinya kando, ukifinya kando ina, iko na hiyo uwezo wa kuzunguka. Elsewhere the Meru County University of Science and Technology has launched a project aimed at enabling people living with disabilities access basic education using computer services. 
University Education and Research Principal Secretary Simon Nabuhwesi says the 15 million shillings project will provide computer services using an application that detects the face and breadth of learners. These are gadgets that can uh, be used without limbs to operate a computer, search for information, post information, communicate with the, the teachers and it facilitates for communication back and forth between a learner and a teacher so that children who are born with a disability can also access knowledge. Meanwhile, a family in Shiambitsi village in Navagolo Kakamega County is in mourning after a middle-aged man was found dead at home. It is alleged the deceased whose body was found hanging from the rooftop took his own life after being unable to repay a loan of 13,000 shillings which he borrowed a few months ago. Finally, stakeholders in the tourism and wildlife industry have benefited from donations worth 100 million shillings to cushion wildlife conservancies against the economic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The money will be utilized to pay salaries to rangers and essential services in the conservancies for a year until the tourist sector is back to normal. We are happy to see that the government uh, was able, uh, through uh, the national stimulus program announced by the president, allocate uh, uh, three billion for soft loans to the tourism sector. This money was vested in the tourism trust fund and therefore investors uh, have now an opportunity to go and borrow some money to kick off their businesses again. In the world news, Guinea began voting Sunday in a high-stakes presidential election with the 82-year-old incumbent Alpha Kant bidding for a controversial third term, the poll, in the heels of months of political unrest in Guinea where dozens of people have been killed during security crackdowns on mass protests against Alpha quest for another term. More from our Global News Roundup. Guineans are voting in a controversial election where 82-year-old Alpha Conde is seeking a third term. The incumbent appeared to have ignored critics to push for a change of constitution that allowed him to extend his stay in office. Results are not expected for several days. Candidates need more than 50% of the vote for outright victory. Meanwhile, a landslide has killed at least 14 military personnel and left eight missing in central Vietnam. The mudslide hit the barracks of a unit of Vietnam's fourth military region in the central province of Quang Tri. It occurred days after another landslide killed 13 people, mostly soldiers in the neighboring province of Tua Tien Ho. Elsewhere, Armenia and Azerbaijan have accused each other of violating a humanitarian ceasefire in the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. A truce had been agreed to start at midnight local time on Saturday, but an Armenian defense ministry said Azerbaijan broke the ceasefire after just four minutes by firing artillery shells and rockets. Azerbaijan is yet to respond to the allegations. Finally, U.S. President Donald Trump and his Democratic challenger Joe Biden will court early voters as their campaigns step up events ahead of their final debate this week. Concern about crowds at the polling stations during the coronavirus pandemic has driven far larger numbers than usual to vote early ahead of the November 3rd election. So far, nearly 26 million people have cast their ballot in the election, shattering records according to the U.S. election project. The season to honor our heroes with accolades and applause recognition is here again. KBC, in collaboration with the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Heritage, will bring you the Mashu Jade celebrations live from the Gusi Stadium in Kisi. Here to watch an elaborate documentary showcasing our culture and acknowledgement of our nation's triumphs that will run a day before only on KBC Channel 1. Next on
help me, please. Fra Francisco. He wants to kill me. That must be him. It's him. Help me, please, help me. El paraíso conocimos. Let's now get the sport. Tom Alila says he will file a case in court seeking the nullification of Saturday's Football Kenya Federation elections. Alila alleges that he has evidence of voter bribery and intimidation that the voting exercise failed to meet the requisite threshold. Alila lost the Nairobi's National Executive Committee member seat to Michael Oma. Yeah, we are going to go to court. We are going to be enjoying because we were now party. We had, we had locals to participate in this election. So we are going to support what Wasike wrote. And we are going to go to court fully eh, on these matters of compliance, eh, which she raised. Eh. So uh, it is us who have the locals to go to court now. And we are putting our paperwork together. And we are going to go to court to stop, uh, to have this election nullified again because of these malpractices. We have evidence of, we, we are going to put in the evidence of bribery and uh, how the delegates were locked in one place, in one hotel in, uh, in, uh, in Sportsview all the night where Nick was paying the money which came from Tangatanga people. So those are very serious issues that we are going to deliver to, 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 to see. Wale watakuwa kukiendesha mipira ni watu ambao haukuchaguliwa katika njia halali. Hiyo ndio hiyo ndio shida kubwa ambayo tunayo sasa. Na tusiporekebisha hiyo tutaendelea tu uh, mambo itakuwa haitaenda vizuri. Na ikiwa ni mambo ya harambe stars ambayo inacheza mashindano ya kimataifa. Uh, waziri waziri ya uh, abuni uh, ataje kamati ambayo ni harambe stars managing board ambayo ikiendelea na ikiendelea na mambo ya, ya timu za taifa na upandio sasa msajili wa michezo aendelee kutengeza kuratibu mambo za, za uchaguzi Away from Alila's allegations, the second semi-final CAF Champions League match beating Moroccan side Raja Casablanca and Egyptian outfit Zamalek will be aired tonight at KBC Channel 1 starting at 10 p.m. East African time. Last night, newly appointed Alali head coach Peso Mosimane rather guided his team to a 2-0 win over Widad Casablanca in a first leg semi-final encounter at the Stade Mohamed Stadium. In the first continental club action since the COVID-19 pandemic caused a shutdown to sports six months ago, White Dad Casablanca saw their 26-month Champions League unbeaten home record shattered. Coincidentally, it was Al Hali who was the last team to beat White Dad at their home turf all the way back in July 2016. Mohamed Kafsha capitalized on an error by Yaha Jabren to give an Ali the lead. All the control, you've got to be careful. Oh, it's an easy chance. This is one on one with the goalkeeper. It's in the back of the net. There's your goal. Well, it's one nil. How about that? Beautifully done. Slotted slickly past the goalkeeper, Tanioti. Casablanca had a great opportunity to restore parity when they awarded a penalty in the 40th minute, but the chance was wasted as Badi Aouk struck his sport kick tamely and enabled Mohamed El Shenawi to make the save. Here it is, here's the shot, the shot goes in, oh it's been saved, I can't believe it, and a second attempt as well, that is just incredible, should have been buried but he couldn't do anything. Ali Manol's expertly taken second half penalty handed an Ali a 2 0 victory. To make it 2 0 for Ali. Ali Manol, he slots it in, blasts into the corner to make it 2 0 for the Egyptian Giants. The second leg encounter will take place on Friday, 23rd October in Cairo. The other semi final is being contested between Raja Casablanca and Zamalek, and the first leg match takes place tonight in Morocco's capital and will be aired live at KBC Channel One. Frederick Mwoki for Channel One Sports. 
And Kenya Hockey Premier League side was the land of men's team that will feature in this year's Africa Club Championship in Malawi on the 30th of November has received a financial boost ahead of their trip to the city. And this is after receiving 50,000 shillings check from Wiz Global Software Company to help in preparing the team ahead of the event. Wazalendo men's hockey team will be making a debut in the Africa Club Championship after securing a ticket having finished in the second position behind defending champions Butali Warriors in the Premier League last season. Due to the financial constraints, the club launched the M Changa platform to raise funds towards the tournament. The amount is set to cover the cost of preparations, travel, accommodation, players' kit, as well as equipment. We've been supporting and we've been together with Wazalendo for, I think, uh, the last 10 years. And we are proud of them. We see them nurturing uh, new, young and upcoming talent. And in our small outfit, we feel it is prudent. We give back. Uh, through them to support the upcoming uh, teams. As it is right now, we are following uh, the guidelines to make our preparations. We can't say that we are totally ready because it's a team sport. So we actually need to put our teams together. But as it is right now, we are ready to go into the next phase of preparations, which is now uh, full uh, b large group training, uh, a big, big team training. And we are ready to also follow the protocols. We have prepared guidelines uh, as a club. In terms of preparation, we haven't quite prepared the way we had envisioned to prepare because we had a laid down um, a regime. Kenyan clubs pulled out of the 2019 tournament held in Ismailia, Egypt, due to financial constraints. Other teams that qualify for the tournament include Butali, Blazers, and Spartans. Frederick Moki for Channel One Sports. And that brings us to the end of Channel One Weekend tonight. Mungai, Patrice, you are tuned in to Channel One Weekend from Muranga Town. And Harrington Jenga, you are also tuned in from Emma Hondo in Kakamega County. Alexis Morara saying that you are following from Gashe. Thank you so much. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your company. And tonight, the second semi final CAF Champions League match beating the Moroccan side, which is Raja Casablanca, and the Egyptian outfit Zamalek will be be aired tonight at around 10 p.m. and that's under 20 minutes and that's where we don't have our weekly segment family matters tonight because that match will be live right here at KBC. Many thanks for your time. I'm Purity Museo Baronabuli has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Do enjoy the rest of our programming. Up next is weather forecast. Good night and God bless. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Channel One Weather Update. Sunday it is. I hope you're well. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem. There are showers accompanied by thunderstorms over several places over the western sector and the Lake Basin region. The capital and counties around the region are currently experiencing showers over a few places. The northwestern part of the country is experiencing scattered wet conditions. This, as the rest of the country, has been covered with partly cloudy conditions, though warm temperatures are prevailing across the country. The lowest temperatures stand at 14 degrees Celsius, and this is being experienced in the county of Kisumu and Nyeri. Tomorrow we'll wake up to rains in Eldoret, Kitale, El Nakuru during the morning hours. There'll also be rains of a few areas in the county of Saburu. The northeastern parts of the country and several places over the northwestern parts of the country will experience sunny intervals during the morning hours. The capital will be cloudy and this will also be characterized with sunny intervals. These are weather patterns that will also be experienced in Meru and Nyeri. The coastal strip will mainly be sunny and in the afternoon, 
Sunny conditions will continue at the coastal strip. The northeastern part of the country will be sunny. The northwestern will also be sunny. This cloudiness that you're seeing here will only be over a few places, and that does not mean that wet conditions will prevail. The western sector and the Lake Basin region will experience showers accompanied by thunderstorms over several places. This will be limited to Kericho, Kisumu, Kitale, and Eldoret. In the capital, we are expecting showers in the afternoon. Thus, we need to pack that umbrella tomorrow morning as you leave the house. And there will also be showers in Meru and Nyeri. Temperatures still at 8. Mandera will experience highs of 36 degrees Celsius. And that will also be experienced in Lodwa. The capital will experience highs of 27 and lows of 16 degrees Celsius. And for you in Mombasa, expect highs of 31 degrees Celsius. It's time for us to cross the borders and have a look at the international forecast. Do have a good night and a blessed day.